His nickname is Major Mika, and lately, it's easy to see why. After winning the richest event in the history of bowling, last month's Tournament of Champions, Mika Koivu Niemi is in position to take yet another major, the USBC Masters. Can the Big Finn win back-to-back -back majors and put a lock on Player of the Year honors? Find out next. Bowling Stadium for the Bear USBC Masters, the third of four majors on the PBA Tour. Through eight events this season, the Tour has had eight different winners. Today, Finland's Mika Koivunuemi could earn his second title and his second major of the campaign. Glad you're with us this Sunday. Rob Stone and PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson with you. It was about exactly a month ago in Las Vegas we were telling you that Bill O'Neill was the best bowler on the planet. But Mika Koivuniemi has seized that title. This is his third straight major TV appearance. After a rough patch the last couple years, he has absolutely dominated here in the 2011 calendar year. Why? One word, confidence. It, prior to last month, it had been a couple years since Mika had actually won a tournament. And he was really reeling with self-doubt. Self -doubt. But after spending some time overseas, Rob, Mika was tearing it up. He won a tournament in Qatar. He then won a tournament in Finland. And guess what? He found that confidence that had been missing. And really, the confidence is only the only thing that's been missing the last couple of seasons. All the hard work is paying off. Robbie told us both that this is the best he has ever bowled in his life. And everyone on everybody on tour will tell you that Mika Koivuniemi is the alpha dog on tour. And he was part of the most memorable moments this year at the TOC. Just that 10-pin shy of a televised 300 in the semifinal match he would go on to win the TOC the richest prize in bowling history a $250,000 payday so Mika in match number one will take on four seed Mike Devaney who is seeking his third career title for two seed Tom Hess this is just his third tournament of the season but the Iowa native is just two wins away from his first title and Jack Jurek the ripper the only undefeated man in this double elimination match play tournament is your number one seed Time now for the introductions for match number one. The number four qualifier owns a pair of career PBA Tour titles, including the Scorpion Championship at the 2009 PBA World Series of Bowling. From Murrieta, California, Mike Devaney. One of the great personalities on the tour. His best Masters finish was ninth at the 05 Masters in Milwaukee. His best finish at a major fourth at the 2001 U.S. Open. He will finish no worse than fourth here today at the Bear USBC Masters. And Devaney, the native of just outside of San Diego, will get us going. The number three seed is a nine-time PBA Tour champion, including three majors, quarter-million-dollar PBA Tournament of Champions winner. From Heartland, Michigan, representing Finland, Major Mika Koivuniemi. First title won on the PBA Tour was a major, the 2000 Masters, where he beat Pete Weber by one pin. Also won the 2001 U.S. Open, and of course, the very memorable TOC this season. This guy and just watch the fluidity of a big tall Finnish player about six foot four free arm swing a great knee bend as we take a look at the tournament format 256 total entries 10 games of qualifying they cut the field of the top 65 some more qualifying games 
and the only tournament of its kind that we have on tour where there is a double elimination match play. Of the 256 entries, 144 were amateurs. A big discrepancy in the scoring between those two factions. We'll talk more about that in a second. Here's Mika in the second. Leaves the four pin. I think one of the things that Mika has been working on so diligently is watch this Reddit release. He used to hit up on a lot of shots. His release plane is actually more on a little bit of a downward plane. All of his bad shots used to get into trouble because he would hit up or lift up on it and the ball would actually go up before it went down. Now he's releasing everything more on a downward plane. Makes the release much cleaner. So Mika will take a seat and Mike Devaney will head on to the lanes. Told us yesterday to beat Mika the way that Koivu Niemi is bowling. Says he's going to need a 240 or a 250. We talk about the difference between the amateurs and the PBA exempt players. Huge swing, about a 25 pin differential in scoring between the two factions this week here at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno. <laughs> 10 pin. Ooh. Messenger misses. And Rob, this event was open to all good bowlers, or excuse me, all bowlers in good standing with USBC with a certified average of 190 or higher, which means that you would have fallen just a little bit short, but with a little bit of practice and making your spares, we can get you to 190. As you see, a great shot by Mike Devaney. The messenger comes across, goes behind the 10 pin. So strike nine spare for both parties here in match one. Time now for our lumber liquidators. Know the wood. This oil pattern, 39 feet in length, and it is sport compliant because it's a two to one ratio across the lane. You see the players immediately are starting in that track area, the shaded blue area. There's even a little bit of a look directly outside, but as the track breaks down, look for the players to move in and open up the inside part of the lane. And on a somber note, I'd just like to mention that longtime USBC employee Jim Jarzik, who was in charge of lane maintenance for this event for several years, unexpectedly passed away in December. Our hearts and prayers and thoughts go out to his family. Devaney with a strike there in the third. And now Mika Koivu Niemi, who is on the cusp of earning his second career player of the year title. Randy, who, who are the player of the year finalists in your eyes where we stand right now through the season? Mika Koivuniemi, Bill O'Neill, Chris Barnes. And that's about it. I think those are the, the only three that have a chance at actually getting there. You see Mika Koivuniemi's arsenal. He's using the mission 250K. And we know where the 250K came from, the $250,000 winner's purse from the TOC. S Having a ball named after you, that's kind of cool. He used this, the, the same bowling ball when he won the Tournament of Champions. Well, these guys have been absolutely identical through three frames here in match number one. Strike, nine spare, strike. Look for Mika to make an adjustment here. In the fourth frame on that left lane, remember the last time on the left lane he left a four pin, just, just drifted a pinch high. He'll make a move now. Watch this beautiful approach here. You see that knee bend, nice balance. But the thing about Mika right now, man, he's just boiling over with confidence. And quite honestly, $250,000 in your pocket, that'll loosen up your arm swing. Jacks for the big fin. There's the adjustment. Moves in just a little bit more. Let's take a look at Mika Koivuniemi's form. You see the big high backswing right there. I'll go ahead and roll it forward, guys. I want you to watch this. You see the release point, how high it is off the lane, and the lack of knee bend. Not a lot of knee bend, not, not a lot of upper body lean. That's why the release point is so far off the floor. Nice use of the Telestrator, Randy. Thank you, sir. I was here early working on it. <laughs> A little 
baby right. split staring Devaney in the face here with a 310. That one drifted left on him. And he looked down at his hand immediately. And one of the things that Mike Devaney has been working on, one of the changes, was he changed his thumb pitch so that he wouldn't grab it at the bottom of the swing. As you see the 310 conversion rate on television, just under 50%. These stats over the last five years on the telecast. And he misses, so an open frame in the fourth for Devaney. Not an easy conversion to pick up, as those numbers showed. And those numbers you could have seen in the back of ESPN, the magazine, recently. They did a great breakdown of the leaves that have been left on the PBA on television over the last couple of years as we take a look at Mike Devaney's arsenal, and he's going with the Marvel. And interesting, both players using the strongest ball, uh, bowling balls in their arsenal with a hook rating of 10. So even though it's 39 feet, it's not the longest pattern the players bowl on. However, it's playing fairly long, so the player's using a lot of aggressive equipment. Devaney back on the strike train there. Down 22 as he gives way to Koivu Niemi. And, really, and as a player, even though it's, uh, we're only five frames into this, when you give an opponent like Mika Koivu Niemi an open frame or an opening of any kind, well, it, it really beats you down because you know how well this man is bowling. You know how what a great bowler he is. And the last thing you want to do is to give him any chance and any breathing room. Oh, this is his fourth straight top six finish of the season. A stand up triple there for Koivu Miami. Yeah, if it was just for the one pin in Dublin where he missed a show, he'd have made four shows in a row, Rob. This guy's on, on fire, and he's, he's in a zone that, uh, that, as professional bowlers, you only dream of getting to. ESPN Bioblast on Mika Koivuni. I'm a big hockey fan, fan of the Detroit Red Wings. He lives in the Michigan area and likes listening to you two. And we learned yesterday, enjoys cooking. Lamb chop. I'm being told is his specialty. Have you ever had the Mika lamb chop? Uh, I've never been invited. Um, I bet you the song that he's thinking of right now from you too, though, has got to be one. Or Beautiful Day. This guy is a machine like. We only use four baggers here at the Masters. Hambone for Mika Koivuniemi. Is Mika a contender for the season's PBA Player of the Year honor? We'll let you know Mike Devaney's thoughts on that when ESPN's presentation of the PBA returns to Reno. The Bear USBC Masters is brought to you by Lumber Liquidators. Hardwood flooring for less. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Budweiser, great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And by the makers of Bear Aspirin, expect wonders. Mike Devaney, your four seat down 42 pins. His quest to get on the... TV show almost ended Friday evening in the 10th frame of game three of his final three game total pinfall match versus 87 Masters champ Rick Steelsmith. Steelsmith needed a double in the 10th to make the TV show, got the first, but couldn't get the 10 pin to drop. Steelsmith just missing the show as Devaney advanced to the TV finals by a mere three pins. And it was especially tough on Rick. His father, Mel, is battling back from major surgery. So, Mel, hey, we all wish you the best. But, you know, I know I know Rick personally. I know how much it meant to him, you know, as a former Masters champion to make the show again, but not only for himself, but for his father as well. So, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, Rick Steelsmith's a great class act, a great bowler. And it's, it's sad not to see him out here. Let's take a longer because, break you know next what, time, guys. If it wasn't for a couple of injuries, Rick Steelsmith probably would have won 20 times out here on this tour. He is just a, f a phenomenal talent, one of the best talents I've ever seen in my career. And a big miss here by Devaney. 
And, and he was perturbed by the the uh, the little layoff, the weight there for for uh, in between shots for for Devaney there in the sixth frame. He again, comes back off of the shot that he threw in the fourth frame where he went through the nose, leaving the 310, failed to convert. This time, whips the head pick. Yeah, a great pickup for Devaney. So he goes strike spare, strike spare, strike spare. Mike Devaney trying to convert the one, two, four, eight, and that is your bear pain relief replay. Yeah, brought to you by the makers of bear aspirin. He has yet to strike on that right lane. All three of his strikes on the left, which is where Devaney is right now. But he's down 42 as we begin the seventh time to start stringing some strikes together big time. And there he goes. So four strikes, all of them on that left lane. But Devaney will close out the 10th on the right lane. Yeah, he's locked in on that left lane, Rob. But like he said, he's got to finish the match on the right lane. He better figure out the right lane quick before Mika puts an end to this. And here is Mika stepping up, bottom of the seventh, trying to string together five in a row. a little Yahtzee here in Reno to Mika. And he is firmly in control of match number one. Number two seed Tom Hess waiting in the wings for the winner of this one. This guy's in some kind of zone. And you can see it not only in his scores and the way he's throwing it, but you can see it on his face. I mean, his demeanor, his, his facial expressions. It's like, doesn't matter who I bowl against, doesn't matter what the oil pattern's like, it doesn't matter what center we bowl in, we're gonna beat you. Six in a row for Koivu Niemi, and you and I have seen a lot of Mika over the course of the last month, month and a half, and he's always a confident bowler. But there's been a much more positive spin to his attitude when we've met with him lately. Yeah, we, we're always asking him, you know, specifically, what's different? Why are you bowling so well? And, and he won't elaborate. It's almost like he doesn't want to give out any inside information to maybe help his opponents. The bottom line is he knows he's been working really hard. The hard work's paying off. But with that being said, he's extremely confident, like we talked about in the open. Here's Devaney trying to get to his first double of the match, and he does. A borderline mandatory strike there for Devaney. Deficit at 52 for Devaney, who's making his second telecast of the season. Finished fourth earlier in the campaign at the Pepsi Viper Championship. His third top ten of the season. Not a lot of folks realize how consistent Devaney has been through the years. He's been ranked in the top 20 in points each season since the 04-05 campaign. <laughs> And three in a row for Devaney. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, Rob. You're right. He is one of the most consistent players out here, and you never know it because, you know, he himself admitted the fact that he doesn't make a lot of shows out here, but he is there week in and week out. Very consistent player out on this tour. He's like, well, let me see if I can get a little trip four for three in a row. Okay. Max score for Mike Devaney, 228. Mika Koivuniemi, 280. Here's Koivu Niemi trying to put the extra point onto the touchdown here in the ninth. Oof. Oof. First poor shot of the afternoon for Mika. Uh, hold on now. Uh, that's four through the middle. Ninth frame. Could get interesting here.
Mika's going to try to get the ball over into this zone right here. Throw the three over into the 4-7 and have the ball take out the other three. Watch this. Not a bad effort, but an open frame in the foundation frame ninth. Head on over to PBA.com right now and submit your more of what matters to you fan question brought to you by the makers of One A Day. Direct your question this week to our number one seed, Jack Jurek. If your question is selected, you'll be recognized on air and your question will be answered live. Again, head on over to PBA.com. Click on the One A Day logo to submit your question. Jack Jurek, your number one seed. Tom Hess, your number two seed. Mika Koivuniemi off an open frame here. Beginning the 10th, his lead has just been cut to 22. Mika needs to fill 20 here in the 10th frame, Rob. Excuse me, 19. Spare nine, and he advances. Anything less, Mike Devaney still has a chance. He's taking his time here. That's a big bounce back strike for the big Finn. That needs nine on two balls now. Looks like he goes with a little extra loft on this shot. He's going to keep this one online. Yep, absolutely. More loft there, more speed, more direct. He's not going to give that shot there a chance to go high and get four. So he goes with his bread and butter, the straight. Fast, loft, high, hard one for 10 back. We asked his match one opponent, Mike Devaney, yesterday, you know, who's your player of the year right now? He said, if anyone doesn't vote for Mika, they're an idiot. Mika is in control of the PBA right now and in control of match number one. There's the loft, and there is the nine pin which is enough to move on to the semi-finals the wife lena looking on and another win on television from mika koivu niemi and he will advance to take on tom hess guys in control rob Absolutely is. When we return, we'll hear live from our number two seed, Tom Hess, plus some 300 history here at the Masters. This is the Bear USBC Masters coming your way live from Reno, Nevada. We welcome you back to Reno, Nevada. Mika Koivu Niemi stringing together eight strikes, six of them in a row, wins by 24 to move on to the semifinals of the Bear USBC Masters. Time now for the Just for Men mustache and beard. Keep your edge moment. We flash back to some Masters perfection. The last two perfect games rolled out of major have happened here at the Masters. 1997, amateur Jason Queen shot the first televised 300 in Masters history. He would go on to win the tournament. And then the very next year, right here at the National Bowling Stadium, Parker Bone III shot a 300 in the opening match in the TV Finals. However, he would lose in the title match to fellow lefty Mike Albee. There have been just four perfect games in major history. Nika Koivu Niemi almost with a 300 game a couple weeks ago at the Tournament of Champions at 299 in the semifinals. Mika Koivu Niemi moves on to take on Tom Hess. Tom Hess and Tom Doherty have some eerie similarities. Tom Doherty who made his first singles televised appearance at the TOC versus Mika Koivu Niemi struggled to shoot a 100. Hopefully that won't happen for Mr. Hess. Tom Hess standing by live right now with our Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. Thanks, Rob. Tom Hess looking to become the 20th player in PBA history to win a major for your first title. Big question, how do you get it done against the hottest player on the planet? 
I'm just going to try to focus on what I've been doing all week. Uh, post my shots, let go of the ball. It doesn't matter what he does. If I perform, I'll win. Rumor has it you like to be animated. Are we going to see some of that today? I uh, hope I can uh, pull a score to uh, have a little bit of fun. Thanks, Tom. Good luck. Thank you, Randy. So Tom Hess getting ready for his semifinal showdown versus Mika Koivu Niemi. Rivalry week continues tomorrow on ESPN. Your home court of college hoops at 7 Eastern. Boy, the Big East is a mess. Syracuse is really struggling. Six losses in their last eight games. They take on West Virginia at 7 p.m. And then number two, Kansas. They may be number one in the nation by the time they tip off Monday versus Kansas State. You can see that one live, 9 Eastern on ESPN. And both of those games also available online at ESPN3.com and on your telephone. So it's number two seed Tom Hess in his first televised singles appearance of his career up next. What does Kentucky Bluegrass have to do with the hard throwing man from Iowa? Find out when we return. The Bear USBC Masters is brought to you by Barbazol. Start your day with Barbazol Shaving Cream, America's leader for a close, comfortable shave. By the makers of One A Day Men's 50 Plus Advantage, the multivitamin with more of what matters. By Spariva Handy Hailer. And by Go RVing. Visit GoRVing.com to watch a free video. Go affordably, Go RVing. Updated stepladder showing that Nika Koivu Niemi, your three seed, has moved on to our semifinals. The take on number two seed, Tom Hess. And Major Mika seeking his fourth major title of his illustrious career will bat lead off here in the semifinals. Native of Finland, resides in Heartland, Michigan right now. And he is the most dominating bowler on the face of the earth right now. The number two qualifier has six PBA regional titles as runner-up finish. In the 2010 Regional Players Invitational earned him an exemption from next season. From Urbandale, Iowa, Tommy Hess. This lady actually the second televised appearance for Tom Hess and the first happened here in Reno. He was part of a mixed doubles competition, but this his first singles appearance on TV, a very likable young man from Urbandale, Iowa. Oh, wow. Goes Brooklyn, and he'll take it. Yeah, that one got to the swing a little early. Big oh, tug there at the bottom, watch this. This is just apprehension and nerves, and that's a huge break. Take advantage. He was saying just before we came back on the air during his warm-ups, Randy, I got to be me to his coach. He's been trying to guide it. He says, I got to be a good one on top of that. who I am. And uh, an early break for your number two seed. And you need breaks to beat Mika Koivu Niemi the way he's bowling right now. There you go. That's better. Back-to-back -back -back jacks for Tom Hess. His best finish at a major till now was 18th at the 2008 PBA World Championship. Big, strong guy in the offseason. He delivers Saad, looking to stay ahead of Mika Koivuniemi and avoid an early dirt nap. That's a beautiful way to throw a double right there. Dirt Take nap a and Saad into the same quote. You are really on your game. You always step it up for the majors. I love majors. What can I say? And you love your Kentucky Bluegrass. Major Mika matching with an opening pair of his own. Again, a lot of opponents would get perturbed by watching the guy they're bowling against throw a double via a Brooklyn strike, but 
not when you're Mika Koivuniemi and you're where you're at, where he's at mentally. I mean, this guy's just like, okay, Tom threw a Brooklyn and then he threw a Dunham. It doesn't matter because I'm going to bury this guy anyway. Triple for Koivu Niemi. Randy, only seven have won multiple Masters titles. Some great names, Mike Albee, Earl Anthony, Doug Kent, Walter Ray Williams Jr., and two more wins, and Mika will be on that list as well as we take a look at the arsenal of Tom Hess, a native of Urbandale, Iowa, a western suburb of Des Moines. Des Moines. Virtual Most Gravity Des Moines. Nano. That ball did some damage this week here in Reno. Strongest ball in his bag. That's it. Push. And it drops. Well, maybe the only thing or the only way to beat Mika Koivu Niemi is through the divine intervention. Brooklyn flush trip four three bagger, and we're all tied up. And here's Tom Hess on the thrill of making today's TV show. To me, it's really not about the money. It's about uh I dreamed since I was a kid, you know. I want to bowl against Pete. I want to bowl against Walter. You know, I love those guys. I respect those guys, and I can beat those guys. And I just want my chance to to do it without having to go through the Wednesday qualifiers to get there. You know. How about a ham bone for your first televised singles appearance, and it just happens to be at a major. How about let me throw a big chunk of sod in your face? I'm not afraid of you, Mika Koivuniemi. Here's four in a row. Let's go. Put them up. Mika Koivuniemi. Mowed down Mike Devaney in match number one, trying to put the blades to Tom Hess here in the fourth. Back to back. Ham bones in the semi. All I can say about that last shot, Rob, watch this. It's just pure. Nice and fluid. Great off his hand. Head doesn't move. Eyes on the target. Six snaps the 10 out. This is good stuff. This is what makes you excited about majors, watching these two players go back and forth like this, matching each other strike for strike. Oh, this is an awesome semifinal. Nine strikes thus far. And Koivu Niemi responding to Hess, and Hess matching the best bowler in the world right now. Again, Tom Hess will be an exempt bowler next season. This just the third tournament he's rolled in Post this season. All of this taking place in the Cathedral of Bowling, the National Bowling Stadium. for Hess. Just nasty, sick, nasty That's stuff. Both players perfect through five. Tommy Hess has brought some game. Tommy Hess had very few tight matches this week here in Reno. And he is really handling himself well. Got an early break in the first with that Brooklyn strike. He is settling down and has matched Nika strike for strike through five. Close. Crack open to six pack, Tom Hess. Rob, you're right. He was really never tested throughout match play. Except for his first match with Lenny Borsch. After that, it was it was pretty smooth sailing until he lost to Jack Jurek. Hey, Randy, the only undefeated player. Randy, want to know where we may see more than 100 million pins about to fall? Where? Well, we may. Have, I feel like we've seen 100 million fall already in this match. I'll tell you when we return. Plus the conclusion of Hess and Mika when we return to Reno.
this the scene while we were in break. Tom Hess, do you think he's relaxed? Think he's into it? You're right, he is. Like it's 2012, know that it doesn't matter as long as Sing it along to the house, PA. That's awesome. He is enjoying his time. Uh, he's a wonderful it. personality. Yep, he really has a great time, and, and I'm, I'm glad that he's bowling a good enough game to allow his personality to shine. Unfortunately, he's got his hands full because he's bowling the hottest player on the planet right now, Mika Koivuniemi. Through the nose. And it's always tough for the guys to come in cold after that long commercial break, and Mika cracks here. Damn it. Well, he's gone through the nose twice in two games, and both times he's left the same four through the middle split. Three, four, six, seven, nine, ten. Was unable to convert it in the last match. He's got a chance. But it'll be an open frame for the big fin. And the lead jumps to 30 all of a sudden for Tom Hess. Nika will regroup and ask for a re-rack as well. Last time, somebody made a televised appearance in the season's first three majors was Patrick Allen in the 04-05 campaign. He just happened to win Player of the Year honors during that campaign as well, an honor that Mika Koivu Niemi is in the driver's seat of for now. In two weeks, we'll be at the U.S. Open and a lot will be determined there in Jersey. Boy, you're starting to see just how fast the oil's transitioning. Come out of commercial break, Mika goes through the nose on the right lane, pays the ultimate penalty, four through the middle, makes a little bit of a move on the left lane. That lane recovers just a little bit more from the right. And again, that ball over hooks, leaving a four pin. Randy, how much does Hess's style affect the lane breakdown today? Uh, I think it's a combination of Hess's style and the bowling ball he's using. Very aggressive, strong bowling ball, playing around the same line that Mika is playing, peeling a lot of oil off of the lanes. Actually, Tom has probably just slightly left of Mika and taking care of Mika's hold area. Seven in a row for Hess. The 7-10 was staring him for a moment, but all 10 dropped. You know, and I'm starting to think that there's really electricity going through his body. You see it on his shirt? I'm starting to feel it up here in the booth. Check that out. I mean, he's carried everything in the building this match. Started with the trip six Brooklyn, carried a couple nice hits, and then trips the 7-10 out for seven in a row. We said you have to have things go your way. You have to get the breaks to beat Nika Koivuni. I mean, the way he's bowling. And Hess is getting them, and he's earning them. Here he is in the eighth. Didn't like it. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Big difference between going through the nose and having the three six to shoot at and going through the nose and having six pins to shoot at and a big six pin split. And that's what we saw with Mika. Tom has a nice break there. Goes through the nose, only leaving the three six. Easy conversion. A spare here and he will maintain a 38 pin lead. So there will be no perfect game here in the semifinals. There were no 300 games this week and in fact through the tournaments thus far on the PBA Tour just 24 perfect games that number way down compared to last season so Koivu Niemi will step up here in the eighth down 38 his last two frames open and spare that after he got off to a great start dropping five strikes in a row On the strike train is the big fin. ESPN is your NBA destination tonight. Kevin Durant 
The NBA's leading scorer takes on the Golden State Warriors at 8 Eastern. The game also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. Oklahoma City 34-18 and overall. Big win last night at Sacramento. Important ninth frame effort here for Koivu Niemi. And he leaves the tent. And he goes with the adjustment that uh, is his bread and butter, and that's the loft. And trying to hold pocket, Mika tries to get a little air under that last shot. The problem is the ball finished late and it finished soft leaving a half 10. Tom Hess in complete control. The best Mika can shoot now. 230. Tom Hess is already in the high 250s. Come on, Tommy. So Tom Hess. One shot. Delivers sod for a living. One more time, dude. Gets laid off One more every time. winter. Just post it. And let it go. Is one win away from moving on to the title match at the USBC Masters. Here he is in the ninth. Gosh. I've seen Tom has to do this twice in this match. The first time was the first frame on the right lane, and the last time was this shot right here. And what happens is he gets the ball into the swing quick. The ball starts down early, gets Very to the shot, bottom dude. of the swing too soon. You see the loss of balance there. That's called early timing. And every time he has done that, every shot has been pulled left. Nice cleanup though there in the ninth. The lead at 36, one frame to go. And this one is in the books. Tom Hess will move on to the title match. Needs to keep it on the lane, Robin. That it's it's uh, it's over. He'll bowl Jack Jerk for the title. The only thing that could hurt Tom Hess right now is a foul. Let it go, dude. Or a double gutter. I don't see any of that happening. That's the way to end it. Uh -huh. so Tommy Hess advances to move on to take on your number one seed, Jack the Ripper Jerk. <laughs> you like that, huh? I like both of these guys. Hey. No, you just like oh, saying ironic. the Ripper. You missed it the last time you shot it on TV. Run this one over. He needs to get refocused and settle in because he's going to bowl Jack Jerk, who's been undefeated in this event. You talk about that. He mentioned to us yesterday that he was just happy to make the show and lost a little bit of his focus in his match versus Jerk to find out who would be the one or the two seed. And he's told us, oh, I'm happy it happened then and not on Sunday. So he's well aware he needs to bring those emotions back home. Regroup and refocus as Hess closes out his effort in the 10th, leaves the 10 pin, but he has already knocked down enough to take care of Mika Koivu Niemi and move on to our title match. Fans are behind him. That's always a plus. What a year this man is having. Quarter of a million dollars in his pocket from the Tournament of Champions, almost worth 300 that day. A pocket 710 to take with you onto the to the US Open in a couple of weeks, but he's on quite a run. Still a very dangerous man on the tour. Well, it's only been made three times in the history of the sport, but zero times the last five years. And Mika wasn't going to make a bold attempt at making it again, so 254, 219. Tom Hess, who has won all of zero Lumber Liquidator PBA Tour titles, has moved on to our title match. So we are closing in on our uninterrupted coverage of the season's third major of the season, and we'll hear live from that man, our number one seed, Jack Jurek, when our coverage of the USBC Masters returns to Reno.
Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, welcoming you back to Reno, Nevada, and this year's Bear USBC Masters serves as a precursor to the 108th U.S. Bowling Congress Open Championship, which is held here at the National Bowling Stadium. It will be conducted every day, 122 consecutive days from March 4th through July 3rd between 12,000 and 16,000. Five, team, five player teams will be there. Expected total pinfall of more than 100 million pins. That is an outrageous tournament. And our thanks to Stu Upson and Darlene Baker, the USBC Executive Director and USBC President. They will be here in Reno to see a lot of those pins fall. Time now for the Geico Championship recap. Randall. You got it, Rob. Match number one, Mika Koivuniemi taking on Mike Devaney. Well, it was all Mika. He threw a smooth six-bagger en route to a 230-206 to 206 victory over Mike Devaney. Then in match number two, man, did we have some fireworks early. Mika comes out of the gate swinging. He starts with the front five, but a huge split right there in the sixth frame. Tommy Hess, well, guess what? He took advantage of that. He was all over it. He started with the front seven. Tom Hess advances to the championship round match, beating Mika 254 to 219. So we are just moments away from our uninterrupted coverage of today's championship match. Tom Hess versus Jack Jurek. Between them, they have two Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour titles. Jurek having both of them. Where do you see the edge early on in this one? It's got to be for Jack because he's been in this situation before. He actually led this tournament back in 2006, only to lose to Doug Kent. But Doug Kent shot 277. Jack bowled a great game. Jack's got all the experience in his corner, but Tom Hess has got all the emotions and all the momentum in his. And there's been a lot of success through the years as the number two seed at a USBC Masters Championship match. Not so for your number one seed. Jack Jurek is your number one seed, and he is the focus of today's more of what matters to you fan question brought to you by the makers of Bear Aspirin. And we head on over to the question for Jack. And Jack, this comes your way from David in Boise, Idaho. He wants to know, as the number one seed, did you watch the matches before yours to get an idea of how the lanes are playing, Jack? Yeah, yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely paid attention. Uh, I wanted to see how the guys were playing because I, I know there was a couple options, either playing straight, straight or from out, or moving more into the track. So um, I, I paid attention, saw everybody moved in, so uh, which was good for me because I kind of played in the whole week. So I'm uh, going to stick with that. All right, thank you, Jack. That was today's more of what matters to you fan question, brought to you by the makers of. One a day, so Jack Jurek trying to take home that piece of hardware. He was your number one seed at the 2006 Masters, but fell in the final. Redemption time on deck, but he'll have to get by Hess if he wants his third career title. Commercial free coverage of our title match next. This is the 11th time Reno has hosted the USBC Masters. The first was 1977. It was won by Earl Anthony. This year's edition will be won by either your number one seed, Jack the Ripper Jurek, or number two seed, Tom Hess. What do you get when you crossbreed Raleigh Fingers, Yanni, and Peyton Manning? That guy. <laughs> I think he was on our show a couple weeks ago, actually, out in Dublin. Really? Yeah. I don't like remember seeing him there. He wasn't wearing that get up. Post it. Pry it off. Come on. Here is Hess, 254, 219 winner over Mika in the semis. He had strikes in his first seven frames. The only match that Tom Hess lost this week was to Jack Jurek, which made him the number two seed. And he lost to Jack, remember, three game matches once you made match play in this event. He lost to Jurek 583 to 668. 
Looking for a little payback that starts with a 4-9 split. And he admitted he lost a little focus heading into that match as well. And an open frame in the first, which is the frame right. you want an open frame if you're going to have one. Here's the intro for your one seed. The tournament leader owns two titles on the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour, one of the original college greats out of West Texas A&M. From Lackawanna, New York, the Ripper, Jack Jurek. One of the more likable guys on the tour. One of my favorite stories about Jack Jurek, he bowls league back home just outside of Buffalo. His team named the Narcissists, and we'll tell you all the guys on the team after his first effort. So the Ripper with the drop in, give me 10 on his opening effort. So on his team, Randy, it's Tony the Hook, Punk, Dirt, Bishop, and Luca Brazzi. And they are all together today having a little party. We believe at Tony the Hook's house. <laughs> take That's a look awesome. at the. the I, you know what? I want to be invited to a party of the narcissists uh, as we take a look at the arsenal there for Jack Jurek. Jack going with Anarchy. Deciding not to go with the strongest bowling ball in his arsenal. Maybe to use something that's a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner through the front part of the lane. Very smooth release, but will not get the strike here in the second. And because Jack is your number one seed, he gets choice of starting lane. Jack chose to start the match on the right lane, which means he finishes on the left lane. So the school of thought is, well, I either finish on my good lane or I keep Tom Hess from finishing on his good lane. Kicks that one out seven years in a row for Jerk, making at least one television appearance. Again, just Couldn't two tour one. titles on his resume. He takes a seat up 11. Here comes Hess to close out the second. As soon as Jack let go of this, he turns his head. He's like, don't chop it, don't chop it. <laughs> Applause. Okay, I'm safe. Very relaxed. Jerk, here's Hess. <laughs> Pretty looking stroke right there. Hess, the native of Urbandale, Iowa, a suburb of Des Moines, will be exempt next season, married with... Right, two children, zone, dude. fan of the Chiefs, fan of two and a half Where men, delivers be? sod for a living during the summer. He gets basically fired every winter when there's really no sod to deliver. I didn't see karaoke, karaoke, karaoke. on that list. We'll, we'll update it as we saw him sing in between commercial breaks. Here's Hess to the third. Back to back Go Jacks for the fired up Hess. Right now, he's happier than the gymnast in a mattress factory. He says, all right, I'm going to take it to jerk quick and early. Get on him and stay on him. Let's get that double out of the way quick. Again, Hess got off to a great start versus Mika Koivuniemi. Dropped the opening seven strikes. Mika finally faltered, and Hess just kept the foot on the pedal. Here's Jurek in the third. Messenger delivers! <laughs> well, you know, you talked about it earlier. But I don't know a player out here that doesn't like Jack Jurek. And sometimes nice guys don't always finish first, but it was nice to see Jack get that win last season and get him off the schneid. It was some, what was it, 10 years and... 14 years. Yeah, that, that's right. That's right. That's right. days and a couple hours in between PBA victories. He won the Shark Championship last year in Michigan, beating Mike Fagan in a roll-off. And gets the wrap to fall down again. This is second top 15 finish of the season. He won his first tour title in 95. Won his second last year, looking for his third here. Well, you talk about his nickname, the Ripper. Boy, he had the Jack the Ripper look on this shot right here. He makes a little bit of an adjustment going light. The last time he was on the left lane, and that's just 10 in the pit. And up goes Hess, just his third tournament of the season. He will bowl every tournament for the remainder of this campaign and will be an exempt bowler next season. His third in a row. 
This guy's jacked. He's a strong, strong guy. What he has to do is try to flatline his heart rate. Stay nice and mellow because the problem with strong guys is they get too jacked up and they overthrow it. Take a look at what he's done in this building. Loves the bowling stadium. Finished second at the RPI and earned his exemption in this building for next season. Also made the TV finals here of the 2009 Don and Paula Carter Mixed Championship. That was his first televised appearance, but this is his first singles appearance under the lights. Close, push. Oh. Four pins right. shy of Come a four bagger. Nine out that time. And again, just a little early in the swing, Come which on. causes the ball to get down to the bottom. Just a pinch quick, watch this. You're gonna try to, you're gonna see his hand follow through that way. What he did was he tried to fan that hand to the right and try to save it because instinctively he knew it was going to be left out of his hand. Jurek looking for three in a row, has a two pin lead. Native of Lackawanna, New York, which is located just south of Buffalo. And a triple there for Jurek. Well, you can just see just how confident he is and, and what a huge Huge weight was lifted off his shoulders when he won his second title last season. We're going to take a look at his approach. You see how his setup is kind of this way. Well, he sets up like a cranker. Oddly enough, he's a down and in. He likes to go nice and straight. You see the nice body lean right here. Great balance and great knee bend right there. Eyes on the target. But it's interesting. And when you talk to Jack now, he's like, you know, I used to be kind of a real straight guy. I used to like to go really straight, but. My ball speed's come down. I'm getting older. I kind of like to move in and open it up a little bit now. Oh, whoopsie! Well, hand bone action for Jurek. The narcissist applauding back home outside of Buffalo. Now, normally when you see a player pop up out of his approach real quick, he doesn't like it, but that's... Not what happens with Jack Jerk. As soon as it gets halfway down the lane, he stands up on it. He knows it's good. Five strikes through six frames for your number one seat. Here's your two seat, Tom Hess, working off of a spare in the fifth. Back on the strike train is Hess. He ended qualifying tied for 31st, then went five and one in match play, and he said the ball he was using was just flat running pins over using that virtual gravity nano, which has turned a lot of heads this week here in Reno. Down 22, we begin the seventh. Back-to-back -back jacks for Hess as the seven pin drops. The people wonder why you put revolutions in ball speed on a bowling ball. This is why. Watch this. This thing is just going to go in there and can't open the pocket. You got pins going everywhere. That's why you put revs on a bowling ball. Jurek, the second straight Buffalo native to be our number one seed. Ryan Simonelli was our one seed two weeks ago and won. Five in a row for the Ripper. Randy, do you got the keys? I do. Here you go. Catch. Right. Let's fire it up. After a week off, we head to North Brunswick, New Jersey, the fourth major of the season, the 68th edition of the Lumber Liquidators. Three days of live coverage, Friday and Saturday on ESPN2, and then Sunday, 3 Eastern on ESPN, is your finals. And after that, we head to Cheek to Waga, right near where. Jack Jurek lives for the Mark Roth Plastic Ball Championship. Here is Jurek beginning the eighth, up 22. No. What row? <laughs> Not when you want that to happen. It wasn't too bad either. 
You know, interestingly enough, he was a little surprised by the last shot he threw on that left lane where it snapped back and went flush. He likes this shot, and you can see he gets it in the oil just a little bit, and that ball just hydroplaned. Since 2005, only 10% of the efforts at the 210 have been converted. As Jurek applying some tape, stealing one from the West Malat playbook. This is a big effort here in the eighth. Two, missing the 10. Open frame. Door open to Tom Hess. Uh, can't even feel bad about that one. Now let's see how Hess can handle this. Again, this is first singles television appearance. The native of Urbandale, Iowa, will be an exempt player next season. Ran over Mika Koivu Niemi by 35 pins in the semis. Didn't like it. Boy, and there was a, a huge opportunity squandered by Tom Hess. He failed to take advantage of his opponent's open frame. He was working on a double. He could have locked this match up with strikes in the eighth and ninth. Take a look, see if he gets down early. A little quick there in the downswing, and every time it's left of target and through the nose. Cleans up that one, though. Win for Hess, and he'll be the 20th bowler in PBA history to win a major for their first PBA title. Kelly Kulik and Tom Smallwood achieved that goal last season. Come on. Come on. Post it and let go of it. That's a big time strike in the night. And every time he times it up a little bit better, his projection is always to the right with really good hand. So Hess on, will take a seat and watch Jurek close out his effort here in our title match, the third major of the season, the Bear USBC Masters. Jurek on top by 10. He begins the ninth, coming off in open frame. Look out, back to God, back. Dang it. Two, eight, 10. 210 in the eighth. And right now he's gift wrapping this Masters title to Tom Hess. Let's give him nine here. I've never seen the 2810 made on television. In fact, I've only made it once in my entire career. And that was some 25 years ago. So give him 195 here. He can strike out 225. Tom Hess can strike out 236. Covers the 2 8, leaves the 10, another open frame for Jurek and Tom Hess getting that much closer to his first Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title. Let me tell you how hard this next shot is for Jack Jurek, Rob. After going back to back open frames, both of which shots were light in the pocket, let me tell you how hard this next shot is. He, he better make the best educated guess of his career. His 22nd year on the tour has earned him just two tour titles. That'll work out there. Trying to put the pressure into the Hess camp. Here, peace out. Jack Jerk strikes out. He'll shoot 225. Fell out. Dave. I fell out. And Jack Jerk. I'm okay now. The earpiece that we use to. <laughs> Converse with him in match. We're gonna not talk to him right now with this huge effort here in the tenth. No time 
for the 7-10. No oh, time no, for the 7-10. No. Worst break you could imagine. What I was trying to say was he could have struck out for 225, which would have forced Tom Hess to double oh, in the 10. If Jack gets one, he'll have 214. Don't even, it's not if Tom Hess either, in the 10th frame goes spare nine, he'll win by one. 7-10 has only been taken care of three times on television. Look at the way. Look at the last three frames of Jack Jurek's game, Rob, and that's the difference. Right now, Tom Hess steps up for the biggest shot of his life. He has the opportunity to win the USBC Masters with one good shot right here. Just pry it off. Pry it off one more time. Post it. Let it go. He's not done yet, but the heavy lifting has been completed. Take a sign, collect yourself real quick. Throw another shot. Throw another shot. That is reason 1012 why you love Jack Jurek. Telling his opponent he needs to calm down and regroup and finish this major off. <sighs> oh, I love all you guys at home. Sue, Megan, Andrew, Mom, Dad, I love you all. Oh God, I couldn't even see that. The title is his. Reno gets on their feet. Emotions take over. Tom Hess. Congratulations. Thank you, Randy. Jack gave you the opportunity, and you stepped up like a true champion. What was going through your mind when you stepped up in the 10th frame? Just, just let go of it. That's what I told myself all week. Post it, let go of it. What did it feel like when you saw all 10 go down? Uh, uh, I don't know. It was unbelievable, man. I've been dreaming about this since I was five, six, seven years old. It's unbelievable. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you, Randy. Try not to enjoy this yes. moment. I dare you. We'll put the wraps on the third major of the season when ESPN's coverage of the USBC Masters returns. The Bear USBC Masters is brought to you by the makers of Bear Aspirin. Expect wonders. By Just for Men, Mustache and Beard. Keep your edge. By the USBC and its 2 million members. To find out more about USBC, log on to bowl.com today. And by Lumber Liquidators, hardwood flooring for less. 7 total strikes an 11 pin victory for your 2 seed Tom Hess who wins his first ever PBA Tour title just happens to be a major Tom Hess your winner over Jack Jurek 225 214 Rob Stone Randy Peterson back here with you and we have really been blessed 
the last couple of months with some dramatic victories in majors. We talk about Mika Koivuniemi about a month or so ago. We go back to Kelly Kulik at last year's TOC and Tom Smallwood. The emotion and the energy very similar with Tom Hess's victory here today. Yeah, it's fun to watch that too. And uh, I'll tell you what, you you really can't say enough about the class that Jack Jurek showed in such an emotional moment. Jack goes from trying to win the Masters to losing it and then helping compose Tom Hess so Tom can knock down three or four pins, whatever he needed uh, after that, after he threw that strike. That, that's really great to watch, and that's the kind of guy Jack Jurek is. With that being said, for Tom Hess to do what he did, remember he had the chance early. He didn't take advantage of it, gets up in the 10th frame, Biggest shot of his career comes through. Great to watch. He had great energy to start his semifinal match versus Mika Koivuniemi. Got himself relaxed, got the crowd into his camp, got into a, a happy place where his energy could be out there and he could let it breathe. So a huge win for Tom Hess. And it'll be interesting to see how much of a carryover effect there is for Tom Hess and for Jack Jerk as they head on to New Jersey for our next installment of the PBA Tour. It's the 68th edition of the Lumber Liquidators U.S. Open three consecutive days of live coverage on the ESPN family of networks beginning Friday night, February 25th. Tom Hess becoming just the 20th in PBA history to win a major for his first PBA Tour title. For Andy Peterson and our crew, I'm Rob Stone. Congratulations to Tom Hess here in Reno.